Hi there, it's Friday, so it's time to break down another STEM topic in just four minutes. Today, I want to discuss a recent headline involving the which is when the ground sinks. This newish study found 35 buildings on the South Florida coast are land sinking at an extremely high rate, over 400% the rate of other coastal cities. Subsidence is a concept geologists, civil engineers, and others continue to study to minimize the impact of buildings. So let's look at four key types of subsidence, how scientists are approaching mitigation. You're watching iHeart STEM. Today, we'll tackle one STEM topic I learned from experts. Just four key questions with each answer under one minute or less. I had no idea that 40% of the U.S. drinking water, 50% globally, is extracted from the ground. While most drinking water comes from glaciers or ice caps, the rest is taken from rock, sand, and soil in the Earth's crust that collects over time from rain. The sand or the rocks, like sandstone, is porous, which means there's space in between the particles. You can think about these particles like you would marbles filling up a glass bowl. While packed in there, there's space in between them, which means that if it were to rain, the water can collect in between the marbles, or in the case of the sand, the particles. The water can then be extracted through pumps that move water into wells that are drilled into the ground. When you pump the water out of the ground and the water is not filled back up quickly or at all, the ground becomes more compact. This causes the ground to sink, which as you can see, can have a huge impact to the ground level. Given this is the leading cause of subsidence, scientists are focused on minimizing this by taking a more active role in groundwater extraction and movement so it doesn't get as extreme as in that picture. This comes through a combination of regulation, monitoring, and restriction. There are also active efforts to conserve water or put water back into the ground where it's most needed by directing the water to areas by canals or other methods so that the ground gets back to its typical composition and height. Certain types of soils absorb water and expand, and then when they become dry, they shrink. Hence the name shrinks well soils. Different parts of the world have different soil compositions. So there's certain areas like in Britain or in the Great Plains in the US where these types of soils are more prevalent because of the geology and how the type of soil is spread. Clay is the most common shrinks well soil because it is very porous and it's made up of layers of silica tetrahedra, which form over time from rocks that get broken up by weather or other elements. In periods of very dry heat, you'll hear people make recommendations in certain parts of the country to water around their house. It may sound silly, but this is recommended because if a house is built on clay, if it starts to shrink too much, it can crack the foundation, a basement wall, or a sidewalk. Watering stabilizes the soil from shrinking too much. With the realization that older properties may have been built on clay, engineers and architects can focus on building modern buildings at a deeper foundation level, which makes it less susceptible to changes in moisture within the shrinks well soils. One interesting way they are also getting around the challenges of clay is by using soil stabilizers like lime, cement, or even planting flowers, which change the chemical composition of the soil. Which ingredient to use varies based on the soil, kind of like choosing when to use white versus brown sugar. Tectonic plates are big rocks that cover the entire surface area of the Earth. They are so big they are considered part of the Earth's crust and part of the mantle. There are seven major and eight minor plates that, because the Earth is round, are fractured and have curved sections that are constantly in motion. The movement of these plates causes several obvious and non-obvious impacts that leads to subsidence. Plates that converge can cause earthquakes, which, from the shaking and the general movement, can cause the ground to sink. Subsidence can also cause coastal cities to dip below sea level or create a gathering of sediments, which then the weight of these sediments creates more subsidence. subsidence. Another concept is called isostatic adjustment, which is basically the Earth trying to even itself out. Because tectonic activity can cause things like mountain range formation, the Earth needs to account for the weight of these new mountains by depressing or causing subsidence in neighboring areas. Because we can't control nature, mitigating the effects of tectonic activity is more about monitoring and then applying the knowledge of monitoring to where people live and what is allowed to be built. Examples include INSAR, which is a cool technology that takes a photo of Earth to measure millimeter level changes. Sensors are also growing in use on buildings as a way to measure multiple factors of data like vibration potential settling, and humidity. Mining for natural resources, precious metals, natural gas, or minerals happens in almost 70% of states today. Mining often leads to voids in the ground because the purpose of mining is to take something out of the ground. You can think of these voids like if you've ever built a Lego house and the weight of the Legos over the roof eventually cause the Lego house to crash in. These voids are like the open part of your Lego house that come from removing resources and can lead to the eventual caving of soil or structures above or to the side of them. In addition, the subsidence can be caused through indirect impacts like the soil composition changing or changes in the drainage patterns, which leads to more compact soil or chemicals being introduced into the soil that cause it to be unstable. While old mines are a little harder to stabilize, the good news is for go forward mining, the cause of subsidence is known. So the plan for mining can include preventative steps like additional reinforcement of the roof of mines or more popularly, hydraulic stowing, which is where you fill the mine with another substance like sand or pond ash after to fill the void at a density similar to what was taken out. Stability monitoring prediction are also tools that are used to predict the likelihood of a specific geological area becoming susceptible to sinking or predict through a host of factors where this could start to happen. 
I love learning about the things that are happening all around us that I had no idea about the causes for. Now, if you want to learn more information, check out our new descriptions because we're adding some links and some different things that you can research if you want to learn more about the topic. I'll see you next week.